people should take the time to learn about what exists and what work has happened in the past. So, you know, we've certainly seen a huge um, uh, peak in momentum and interest in defunding police after the police killing of George Floyd in the summer of 2020. And a lot of people are being introduced to the idea of PIC or prison industrial complex abolition for the first time. Yet abolitionist organizing has a rich history. This language, for example, of defunding police comes from decades and decades of that work actually happening. So I say this not just for the sake of stating that work to defund police isn't new, but rather to say that people interested in abolition can look at years and years of work and research and tools and analysis and examples and lessons learned from what people have done. So that way they don't have to be reinventing the wheel. Um, this is a core part of building a movement. You look at what movements have done in the past and use that information to inform how you'll continue building the movement in the future. So I think I would uh, tell someone um, to study, to practice, to build concrete skills, and to document, mainly to study really is to study with others and to study independently. Political education is really important. Um, practice meaning that um, people should join organization or start their own projects. Building concrete skills, very self-explanatory. Learn how to do things and make things and share those generously with your comrades and the world. And then document, you know, keep track of what you're doing, learn from what you've done, reflect. Those would be my suggestions. As important as it is to have a broad ranging um, sort of uh, uh, understanding of what prison industrial complex abolition is, that being able to be specific also allows us then to drill into what components um, of that are represented in policing or represented in jails or represented in prisons or in um, uh, mental health institutions, right? How do we understand the relationships between um, the uh, policing at the border and policing in the city. And these kinds of specific examples, I think, allow us then also to build campaigns, to build coalitions, um, and allow us to keep in the frame at all times that these things are, are all, all intertwined, right? So that every step that we take um, in, in imagining what we might make or what we might fight um, ties to our ability uh, to, to keep that, that bigger picture in mind. We need some combination of theory and practice in order to organize successfully. Um, what that's going to look like is going to depend on you um, and where you are, what kind of struggles you're involved in. Uh, but find the balance, find people you can talk these things over with, do start study groups, and ideally, you know, be in study groups with people who you were also doing organizing with. Um, because without both sides, we're not gonna win. I have two pieces of advice for anybody who's new to prison industrial complex abolition. The first one is to beware of grifters and people who are brand new acting like they have all the answers. You will come to answers that are probably more complicated than those people. And I do believe that there are correct answers to some questions, but the answers that you arrive at will be based on good thinking and practice rather than somebody trying to get you to pay into their Patreon account. So be thoughtful about who you trust and why you trust what they're telling you. The second piece of advice that I would offer is to really give tools, practices, and approaches a very serious attempt, or at least try to get out of them what you're able to before giving up on them or deciding that they are somehow reformist or contradictory to abolitionist politics. 
there is no single practice, approach, or tool that is in and of itself not abolitionist. You always have to ask yourself, what am I using this in the direction of? What am I trying to get it to do? And toward what ends? How am I using it? And toward what ends? And that will help you decide its value. There's nothing inherently good or bad about any individual tool. It's how you put it to work. One of the things that I've come to find be really important, both through activist work and, and also as a teacher who teaches people who sometimes wind up getting involved in this work, is to understand that is to understand ways in which they are already connected to this work, even if they don't feel like they they are in their immediate lives. So if one feels like they don't have anything to do with prisons or the prison industrial complex, or they didn't grow up feeling afraid of the police, things like that, I don't think that means that you don't necessarily have a relationship to those things, uh, but that that feeling insulated from those things is a very particular relationship. As we enter this work, we have to immediately demystify the idea that abolition is some kind of outcome, as if it's some kind of end goal, as if it's some final state of being. It is never that. Uh, over the long historical tradition of abolition, it's, it's most creative and ra radical inheritors have never thought about it as an outcome. It, it is a state of being. It is a form of creativity and community. Uh, it's an ongoing method for being in the world as well as for transforming, reshaping, and disrupting the world. Um, so, so we don't talk about abolition as an outcome. Abolition is what you do. Um, and that is, and that is uh, I think, essential if we think about it in the, in, the, in the collective sense, right? It is what we do. And, and if we do that with a, a deep sense of historical obligation to a certain black radical tradition that uh, is, is principal and central to pushing abolition forward in every historical moment, then I think we can, we can actually get somewhere um, in this moment. I think actually we're, we're obligated to do that. The struggle is long and there's gonna be setbacks. And so you have to find time to study um, learn about social movements, learn political analysis. Uh, you know, it's been very important to me to learn from my elders and to develop mentors. Um, but also, you know, amongst the people that I'm working with to build shared struggle, right? Um, learn how to engage in critique, not only about the system, but also around your own thinking. And most of all, um, be prepared. You know, I think what this moment really shows us is kind of the power of, of people, you know, uh, conceptualizing, articulating what abolition is um, and could be, um, being really clear on what abolitionist goals are, um, organizing around those ideas and beliefs, building power and kind of narrative work to do it. I think you have to get out of the United States and that could mean actually traveling elsewhere in the world but if that's not possible, it could also be accomplished by closely studying other places. I was thinking about how when I came to abolitionist politics, I had spent several years learning from the Zapatista movement in southern Mexico. And there were so many things about the Zapatista movement itself that were deeply inspirational and that resonated with PIC abolitionism. You know, for example, just the movement's core slogan, Another World is Possible. Um, but equally powerful for me was simply seeing firsthand another way of living, another way of addressing problems, another model of community organization. I feel like in order to do the work of abolition, it's essential to actually believe that another world is possible and to believe that not only are there alternative ways of addressing harm, but that there are different ways of relating to one another of organizing ourselves and of organizing society, which is not to say that alternative models don't exist within the US, but there's something about getting outside of these borders that 
allowed my perception of the range of possibilities to really expand. For me and for the learning and the work that I've done, abolition has always meant what we need to build and make as much as what we need to defund or divest. Yes, it's about defunding the police, but it's also what we want to invest in, what we want to experiment, what we want to try, what we want to build. I think um, one thing that would have been useful for me to hear as I entered uh, in abolitionist uh, organizing is to uh, be kind to yourself as you try to uh, unlearn about existing structures uh, of violence and as you learn about uh, PIC abolition, penal abolition, and carceral abolition, um, to, to have humility um, uh, because you know frequently what we're what we're engaging with fundamentally are, are ideas and, and praxis that is um, you know trying to destabilize the status quo to try and destabilize uh, things that we we take for granted, including within ourselves, right? And that can be, um, you know, uh, quite uh, an experience and quite a lot to deal with uh, at times. So, like to to be open to not being uh, perfect, um, to 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 being open to learning uh, and building uh, with others, and to be and to be um, generous with others when um, they're trying to. Uh, build you up, um, even though it might feel like you're you're being teared down. Um, but I mean, we are fundamentally trying to um, tear down the existing and rebuild the world anew. And so we have to um, find ways to to accept that process within ourselves, happening uh, with humility as we try and 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 build uh, communities, not cages, uh, with uh, other folks. So my advice is to get involved, to join an organization, to read what's already out there so that you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, to stay creative and curious. There's a lot that I think has been defined around abolition. So there are times where people will have a, this doesn't exist moment. And then there's a lot that I think is up to us to co-create. And if there's one thing I think we really need right now is that we need more folks, particularly black folks, indigenous folks, people of color, immigrants, poor folks, um, formerly incarcerated folks, folks who are inside, um, queer and trans folks, like we need bigger and stronger bases of people who are being deeply impacted by the violence of the criminal legal system to join abolitionist movements. So I would think that one of the most important things is not only how will you deepen your practice, deepen your engagement, but also support others to get more involved in the movement. When I was first uh, becoming or entering into the abolitionist movement, the movement against the prison industrial complex, I think I would have benefited from hearing um, that abolition is a, a long-term project and a long-term fight. I think I, I knew this intrinsically, but I didn't really, really recognize that. Um, so for instance, um, it was not shocking necessarily, but, but trying to think about the fact that many of us would not necessarily see the abolition of the PIC in our lifetimes was was like a a, a revelation to me. Um, but not only that, but it takes a long time to get wins, and our campaigns are protracted. Um, so sometimes it takes years to win one policy measure, or you know, fights against one kind of policing tactic. Um, take a long time. Um, and I think that's hard sometimes because we continue to see, even as the fights are, are going on, we continue to see um, the impacts of these measures and, and they're so severe and they um, really, you know, hurt people in our community. So while we're fighting tooth and nail, our people are continuing to get caught up, our con communities are continuing to be harmed, and it's like we have no time to lose, and yet winning takes forever. 
situate our abolitionist politics and approaches into a wider set of revolutionary politics. Um, understanding that overcoming capitalism or white supremacy or bringing about in uh, bringing about a revolution in our relationship to ecology or the land thinking about those things as abolitionist or having a abolitionist dynamic in their own right that is transforming the present and ushering in the future through struggle this is a, a long-term and a deep fight that must be fought on multiple fronts with the high level of collective and supple intelligence gathered both from books and not just tweets or one-page summaries of books or articles, gathered from, from books, from active struggle, and from the best practices of our experience living in, but not entirely of these systems that are trying to to kill us or prevent us from living on our, our own better terms. There's a staying power that's required here. And when folks sign up, I hope they agree to sign up for the long haul.